endings. In between one and the other. Between first and last. Always searching. Sometimes finding. What does that even fucking mean? <laughs> There was a time when I was so into Battlefield that hearing the main theme tune would make the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I own one of the original soundtracks, and some of my most memorable gaming moments have been in Battlefield games. This being said, it's only fair to warn you that this is going to be a long and laborious rant about how fucking dreadful Battlefield 5 is. If you love Battlefield 5, well, good for you. Genuinely. Some people like dogging and burning their nipples with red hot paper clips. What you like is none of my business. But if you like Battlefield 5, then your time is probably much better spent playing the game rather than listening to me rage. So please, consider yourself served notice and enjoy the game. But for those of you who are not happy with the changes to the franchise, or if you just want to know more about this game, well I'll warn you now. This salty rant is going to be about as pleasant as listening to someone describe an autopsy on a test pilot. The Battlefield franchise started right back in 2002 with the critically acclaimed Battlefield 1942 and has run on for 16 years, 16 main game releases and god knows how many DLCs. It's one of the few war shooters that can give Call of Duty a run for its money, which in itself encourages unhealthy and unhelpful competition. Some of the Battlefield titles have earned legendary status, and it's a franchise that is considered by many to be the best tactical and strategic FPS game on the market. Once again, this is developed by DICE Studios in Sweden and published by the ever popular EA which is both good and bad news. I think DICE is probably one of the best studios in the world, with a track record of churning out half-finished broken shit. Many of my favourite half-finished broken shit games I have loved over the years have been made by DICE and published by EA. I have to qualify that whilst DICE is brilliant at modelling guns, when it comes to weapon damage and balancing they're frequently fucking clueless. You know the drill churning out SMGs that do more DPS than our fucking light machine gun. The usual nonsense. My take on it is simple. I think DICE is a great studio, capable of doing pretty much anything if they have the required time and resources, and the EA never give them that. They have the skill and the talent. They just get forced to hit unrealistic deadlines on a tight budget and end up throwing the games out of the door unfinished. This said, that's their problem, not ours. Examples of this would be the unfinished single player campaign in Battlefield 4, which literally had entire scenes missing, so that it made <laughs> fucking zero sense. And in fact, the launch of the same game. A game that launched so literally fucking broken and unfinished that some gaming clans collapsed as most players found themselves paying for broken servers and being unable to play for the first four to eight weeks. We are literally talking about a game hitting the shelves that was not actually working. I've been playing this game since Battlefield 2, and at times played very heavily. I wasn't great at it, but I could hold my own. If I played the objectives, did my job, and was in a coordinated squad, I'd be nearer the top of the ranks than the bottom. One of the things I've loved about Battlefield is that if you weren't a great FPS player, you could still get a good score by capping bases, playing tactically, reviving, supplying ammo, laying down suppressive fire and <coughs> putting down claymores. It was a team game where it was about winning the battle and whatever type of player you were, you could still get a good score and help the team if you picked a role and did your job. It therefore makes me genuinely very sad to see what they have done with the franchise in Battlefield 5. I'm not just talking about the fact that it's now a live service unfinished pile of crap where even essential functionality like 
deploying an ammo box doesn't work properly, or them forcing a social justice agenda on players which has required them to rewrite history and do a dishonour to the men and women that served at home and abroad, or even the completely fucked netcode and completely unfinished terrain modelling. The thing that really saddens me is that Battlefield 5 is meticulously and obsessively crafted to force the player to adopt one playstyle. The entire fucking game is hell bent on frustrating the player if they deviate from the script. They want everyone to just pick up a short to medium range weapon, YOLO into the fight with only two magazines of ammo, kill or be killed, rinse and fucking repeat. And if you try and adopt any other playstyle, you will be frustrated at every turn. They want this to be a mosh pit shootout game like Call of Duty, and it breaks my fucking heart. The initial critical reaction to this game, when first details were released, was bad. I'm talking walking into a restaurant and shouting, Don't eat the food! The meat is ground up people! Try and imagine that scene of terror, shock and outrage layered with a soundtrack of people vomiting, wine glasses being knocked onto the floor, and people screaming for the police, and then storming the kitchen. Imagine that? Well, it was far worse than that. I've already made a video about the initial reveal. There's a link for it in the description. I've made my view on the historical retcon and SJW agenda very fucking clear. By release, they dialed back on a lot of the social justice fuckery, which was itself purely a microtransactional sales amplifier, and the reception at launch of the final product has been mixed. Although I should qualify, it's not really the final launch, because it's a live service game, being released in bite-sized portions over the duration of its lifespan, and there were three different fucking launch dates. We will only have the full game, about two weeks before Battlefield 6 is released. And no, I'm not fucking kidding. The TLDR on the critical reception is that they revealed the game at E3 and everyone lost their shit. Then they rolled out the beta and most people thought it was horrible. Then they released the game and something very weird but strangely familiar happened. Corporate reviewers spammed the internet with glowing reviews describing how all the negatively received changes to the game were really positives in disguise, and all of the problems were really opportunities. Many high profile Battlefield YouTubers suddenly completely reversed their opinions about this game being a shitfest, and started making videos about how fucking incredibly super awesome the game is, and despite the game being half broken, unfinished, and only a small chunk being released, they are telling the world how promising the game is, and how the future is bright. The Battlefield 5 subreddit started deleting posts about Activision filing patents, about manipulating player spending. And all this strange behaviour coincidentally happens in the context of Electronic Arts stock price continuing a six month slide, which has cut the value of the company and shares by 50%. Meanwhile, the majority of players have a fairly clear message. They think the game is a big pile of fuck. So what's going on on Metacritic? PlayStation, 75 reviewer rating, 2.5 user rating. Xbox, 79 reviewer rating, 3.0 user rating. PC, 81 reviewer rating, 3.5 user rating. Well, I never. The majority of reviewers from official review sites, <coughs> with links to the industry, think Battlefield 5 is a moist bundle of joy. And the only people who seem to have missed the memo are the millions of players who bought the game across all three platforms, who have squarely decided that this game is only slightly better than Fallout 76 a game that by any standard is a giant bucket of shit. The gameplay and gameplay changes and rebalances are a very mixed bag. 
Some of the changes are fantastic, some not so much, and some of the changes are purely down to personal preference and playstyle. I embraced Stupid and fully threw myself into all the customization and modding options and played all vehicles, classes, and generally tried to be enthusiastic about the game. But I will say now, I struggle to write this review because it's basically a generic Battlefield sequel, only worse than the last one, with the normal broken shit at launch, and significantly, it's trying to appeal to the Call of Duty market. People get triggered when you say that, but what the fuck? Battlefield is now primarily focused on close quarters gun combat, cosmetic fucking customization, and it's even got gold gun skins. Of course it's trying to appeal to the Call of Duty market. Gold gun skins in Battlefield. Enough said. To their credit, DICE have introduced some very nice quality of life functionality improvements to gameplay. You can go prone on your back now when backpedalling. You can throw grenades back and shoot them out the air. You can scuttle along running in the crouch position and jump through windows. A lot of this stuff has been implemented impeccably. You might not even know about this stuff but you will find yourself just doing it because it seamlessly meshes into the general movement mechanics of the game. There are no extra hotkeys to press or anything, it just magically happens at the right time. But this all comes at a cost. DICE, who interestingly have a lot of hardcore Call of Duty players on the team now, have bent over backwards to enforce that style of play. They don't want that sniper on the hill, or support actually supporting. Snipers only get 25 or 30 rounds, so they have to be near support players. E.g. not on the fucking hill. Although support players barely get points for supplying now, so, fuck being support. Suppression is completely nerfed, you only get one grenade per life, and you can't resupply it. All damage to players from explosives, fixed place weapons, tank guns etc have been nerfed to fuck. To the point where you can do more damage to a player shooting them with a revolver, than by firing a 40mm Bofus anti-fucking aircraft cannon in their sodding pie hole. They basically want everyone running around, scrapping like it's Call of Duty, only with more cosmetic gun skins. The first in-game menu screen greeted me with two images. A tosser fighting in the infantry wearing a pilot's cap, and a 15 year old girl. Is this World War II now? Pilots fighting on the ground and 15 year olds doing the job of Norwegian commandos? It's fucking sad to see how they have taken this franchise and put it through the fucking ringer. There is no hiding the fact that on a technical level, this game is a fucking mess. The user interface is a fucking piss take. Setting aside the bug where checking certain things mid-match was resetting progress, the entire interface is half broken. There is basic shit you can't do in a match so you end up having to leave a good lobby to set a new assignment, for example. I also experienced a progress lockup and false UI information. I just ended up in a position where I couldn't unlock the next fucking gun. And every time I left a fucking match, my fucking XP reset to where it was when I went in. The netcode is abysmal. You would think that there was some generic industry netcode pack for this game by now. It's not like people redesign HTML from the fucking ground up every time they create a new web page. The only time things seem to work is if you're within a few feet of someone. As soon as people are shooting at each other from longer ranges than that, weird shit happens. Players run completely through your fire. I've been sniped whilst entirely behind cover. There are instances where the enemy is entirely concealed, but somehow they can both see and shoot me. I'm not talking minor bugs here, I'm talking fucking broken. There are horrific and well documented problems with time to kill and time to die mechanics. Because of balked netcode and or server software, the game is often frustrating, sometimes infuriating. It's quite common to just drop dead to the sound of one bullet plinking into your helmet. The game frequently does not inform you that you're taking fire until you're already dead. 
but the other way round. Sometimes the enemy feel like World of Warcraft bosses, soaking way more bullets than they should before going down. This problem also feeds into other issues like the anti-personnel mines. They operate with such high lag that it takes up to two seconds to register that they've been tripped and detonate. Most of the time, you or the enemy just sprint right over the top of them and just hear a bang behind you as they belatedly go off. I mean, what's the fucking point? The overall environmental modelling is unfinished. The maps look beautiful. Visually, some of them are stunning and some of the prettiest maps I've seen in Battlefield. But the actual 3D modelling underneath the visuals is as fucked as a dockside whore. I've gone prone in one location, shuffled to the left and fallen completely through the terrain onto the floor below. I can't tell you about the ongoing frustration of being snagged on terrain or dying because you can't shimmy around a burnt out tank because your character's stuck on an invisible bit of unanimated crap. As primarily a support player using bipod weapons, the modelling and terrain was shocking. Ridge fighting is a fucking joke. Endless times I died edging towards the ridge line in the prone position. I would spot an enemy and fire. My bullets would clip into the ridge. Or my bullets kicking up dust. Because what I could see did not actually represent the terrain. The enemy could shoot me just fine though and I would fucking die. It was infuriating. I don't mind dying because I'm shit. I mind dying because the environmental modelling is shit. There were small raises in the ground, like the concrete floor on Aerodrome, where you couldn't crawl past them. So you have to stand up like a fucking numpty to get over a two inch ledge. Take one step, get spotted by all the snipers, lay back down, carry on. And carry on means get shot in the fucking head by a sniper. I won't lie, it's occurred to me that they don't want people to play support. Most of the best weapons are on bipods, and using bipods is made as difficult and exposing as fucking possible. Another well documented problem is the game code for driving, particularly when towing fixed guns. The graphics literally spin out and your camera view starts swirling around. How that shit got past quality testing I cannot even guess. The list, as they say, just goes on. Basic rubber banding fails. Basic failure to deploy bipods and ammo box fails. Basic failure to index your stationary position fail. So you just end up like wriggling and twitching when you're prone. Because the game can't quite decide where you are or where you should be. So you just lay there and twitch. Basic animation fails. You wiggle like a speed walker running at full speed. As a diehard support player, it is relentlessly fucking infuriating to repeatedly die because your bipod keeps undeploying or because you're spamming ammo crate and you get shot whilst fucking around trying to work past the bug. This is so bad I'm going to probably keep mentioning it. As a support player, you can't reliably deploy an ammo box unless you stand up and place it out in the open. It's like they want you to get fucking spotted and shot. And regularly, you do. Overall, the support class has got a massive nerf. Most of the LMGs are shite. They can only be used effectively on a bipod, which cripples you most of the time. Not to mention that the bipod mechanics are broken. The support weapons used to have character. Now, they're all shite apart from one, which is getting nerfed. As usual, it's an assault rifle at the top of the charts for TTK. Time to kill. All the LMGs are basically average guns that underperform assault rifles, in violation of fucking reality. But they do give you two overpowered shotguns to use. So if you like to cod it up, you are fucking dandy. No prizes for guessing what they're trying to do there. They don't want support to pack a big powerful gun and defend objectives from an overwatch position. They want everyone running around, jumping in the fucking air like Call of Duty, engaged in constant fucking 
close quarters combat. The sales and release schedule for both the players and the content is horrific. It's literally a glimpse into the live service future of gaming. There are multiple release dates based on multiple pricing platforms. It's so complicated that EA had to release a guide explaining it. November the 9th, the people who get the game first are subscribers to EA's Origin Access Premier service. After, subscribers to EA's Origin Access Basic service get access limited to 10 hours. Last of all, people who pre-order the game. November the 15th, people who bought the Deluxe Edition pre-orders get access. November the 20th, normal pre-order customers get access. The two obvious desired goals are this. They're trying to strong arm players into signing up to EA's subscription service by ransoming their favourite games. Secondly, if you decide to buy the game to try it out, not sign up for subscription services and potentially use your 14 day EA money back guarantee, you're fucked if you want to play it at launch. The in-game economy is fucked. Basically, never buy the skins or you will not be able to afford gear unlocks. It's fairly obvious that the in-game economy was built with the intention of making a lot of skins microtransactions and then they bottled it and backed off, leaving the system broken and overpriced. I would not be shocked if later they allow us to boost our progress with real money. So what's my analysis of this giant shit show? It's hard to describe, it just doesn't feel right. It's like they want the conquest maps to play like Team Deathmatch. Everything is one giant clusterfuck shootout all the time. It still has the rare and occasional moment typical of Battlefield. Those great epic battle moments when you're running through the rubble of a destroyed town, almost face plant into a group of enemy infantry and it all kicks off just as a building's blown apart and a plane flies overhead and you find yourself face down in the shit when it's all over and you survived. But most of the time, it just feels like Call of Duty. In fact, to my surprise, I found Team Deathmatch was the most enjoyable mode now. I guess it's because it's a clusterfuck with only 32 players instead of 64, so it's less random. My experiences of Team Deathmatch were okay. Most of the new maps feel like corridor maps to me. Sure, they're theoretically big, but they're not like classic Battlefield maps. They're large in total dimension, but mostly you operate via very specific, often channeled routes. They're like open air Call of Duty corridor maps. They might look massive, but the actual space you occupy is fairly small. Next time you're bored, print off one of the maps and take a black marker pen and scrub out the areas you can't access. Suddenly you realize that most of the map on the map is just picture. Weapon specialisation replacing weapon modding is I think a huge fat step backwards and a big dumbing down. Generally, the weapons in Battlefield 5 are badly done and have no bearing on reality. I don't know if it's weapon balance, damage drop off, weapon handling or some combination of all three, but generally the LMGs and medium machine guns are woefully underpowered. Submachine guns are vastly overpowered. Sniper rifles behave like air rifles. And as usual, assault rifles outgun everything. The guy in charge of weapon design must have been tripping balls because reality doesn't even get a toe in the door. A perfect example of how ridiculous the weapon balancing is in this game is provided by the Finnish Suomi SMG. This Finnish machine gun is one of the best designs in history. In real life, it's considered a masterpiece. It's impeccably well made, fires at between 750 and 950 rounds a minute, and it's so stable and smooth to shoot on full automatic, it's one of the few SMGs where you can reliably put down accurate full auto fire at range. Christ, if it was lighter, and cheaper to make, people would still be using it today. 
in Battlefield 5, it's a rattling, shaking piece of piss. The barrel practically waves around in the air, shaking uncontrollably. Sure, it's powerful when you've fully upgraded it, but out of the box, this should be one of the most stable, lowest recoil automatic guns in any game. And it's not. Look, Battlefield was once a game where weapons had 20 to 30 attachments, which all subtly and not so subtly affected its performance, and had no cosmetic skins. Now it's a game where guns have endless cosmetic skins, and you mod your gun by picking four perks out of eight. Four fucking choices. They replaced this with this. They are now spending the vast majority of time and effort and resources on making your gun look pretty, and a tiny fraction of effort on weapon performance and customization. If you ever want a fucking example of how the philosophy of cosmetic microtransactions is damaging the quality of video games, well here is one. Games are now becoming obsessed with how your gun looks, and nobody seems to give much of a fuck about how the gun actually performs. Sure, they're not charging for the skins at the moment, but you can bet your ass that was the plan and they changed their minds because of the Star Wars Battlefront 2 controversy. The defence building minigame, to my fucking shock, was not horrible. Only broken as fuck. In some cases you can build some defences that are worth a damn, but most of the time they're counterproductive. Some examples. Uh, on Rotterdam, playing as the Allies, you fortify A on your way past. Then everyone fucks off somewhere else. Then two or three enemies sneak up and take it, only now they're hiding behind your defences, instead of being out in the open exposed, defending the cap. Similarly, I found myself in another battle where our tank was blocked because some fucking cretin built tank traps so we couldn't get where we needed to. What was even worse was that five minutes earlier, I was actually the fucking cretin that built them. The fixed gun emplacements are a joke too, they might as well have a sign on them saying stand here if you want to be killed by a sniper. I actually really like the principle behind the defence building minigame though, but until you can actually build something that improves your defences, it's not worth shit. In fact you often put yourself at a disadvantage by just building fortifications for the enemy to use later. But in theory, I actually like it. Bullet drop off seems balk to me. I couldn't find hard data and SimThick doesn't seem to have Battlefield 5 details yet, but my overall impression was that it's all a bit normalised. SMGs like the Sten seem to be vastly too effective at long range. Light machine guns seem vastly too ineffective even at, even at medium range. There was also the issue of bullet drop from vehicles. I found myself at one point having to compensate for bullet drop shooting from one end of the hangar to the other. I mean fucking really? Bullet drop from a medium machine gun over the length of a building. I think they went a little bit too heavy with the bullet drop. I also have to discuss the issue of the great nerfing. There appears to have been a colossal nerfing of everything anyone ever whined about ever. They have nerfed or removed every populist gripe in order to add free value to an otherwise mediocre game. Mortars are completely gone and explosive damage to infantry has had an enormous nerf. The stationary anti-air guns are basically noisy and ineffective. They do less damage to infantry than a bloody SMG, and they're often tactically positioned surrounded with lots of obstructions like sandbags and trees, and notably invisible fake obstructions. They overheat quickly so you can only effectively shoot bursts of fire at planes, and that's when they're mostly directly above you. 
If you see infantry or vehicles coming towards you, most of the time you can't even defend yourself because your bullets clip sandbags, oil drums or park trucks, all tactically placed there so people don't complain about being shot by anti-aircraft guns. And even if you do manage to hit something, you will do fuck all damage worth speaking of. It's like they sat down and thought, okay, where can we put the AA guns where they will be absolutely fucking useless and nobody can use them on infantry? The end result of all of this, of course, is that bombers are running amok with all the AAA nerfed and stuck in bad positions with blot line of sight. The ground attack vehicles are hammering the shit out of the infantry. You reap what you fucking sow, I guess. Basically, they have nerfed everything other than close and mid-range weapons because they want to force everyone into the battlefield, or should I say, Call of Duty safe space. If people have ever complained about something like grenade spam, mortars, being shot by a cannon or an AA gun, then it's either gone completely or completely nerfed. It's a fucking safe space. It's also old news now that they introduced compulsory chat censorship to add another level of cushions to the safe space. You cannot turn it off and it censors loads of words and phrases and rightly caused outrage during the beta. Previously, sayings like white man and a DLC were banned, but free DLC was not. I mean, it's fucking pathetic. They have softened it a bit now, but that was what they were initially intending. Look, I'm old enough and ugly enough to decide for myself what I listen to. Give us a fucking option to turn it off, because the implementation of this is manipulative, dictatorial, and more fucking offensive than anything anyone is going to say in the middle of a game. Besides, we've heard it all before for fuck's sake. We're gamers. It is really sinister that they're trying to deliberately control what people say about their game in in-game chat. I mean, I'm playing a game where I can blow someone's legs off with an anti-personnel mine, shoot someone in the face with a fucking shotgun, and ride over someone else with a fucking tank. But apparently, saying shit or vagina is strictly off limits, even to people who want to read it. Mandatory chat filters have no place in a free society. I mean, what the fuck? I'm playing a game dressed as a soldier either fighting for or fighting against Hitler. But I can't say Hitler in chat. I can, however, say that I'm an Aryan and a whole load of other creepy shit they forgot to ban. Just get rid of compulsory chat filters, they are a fucking abomination and they're really easily bypassed anyway. I hate the deliberate manipulation of the player experience which is typical of live service games. It's dishonest and harms the consumer. It's like manipulating matchmaking and putting people in shit teams to keep them grinding longer or banning enemy teams from communicating in chat so people don't cry if they get insulted. It adds no value and harms the player. Then again, manipulation is fucking cheap. Hiring 10 psychology graduates who prioritise ambition over their professional code of ethics is far cheaper than hiring 100 professional developers to make the game better so people keep playing because the product is good. Another example of this is the fucking mind-boggling system in Battlefield 5 where they manipulate the team scores in large battles. I don't know the precise science, but basically when a team is about to lose, the server kicks in some kind of ticket bleed or ticket boost mechanic to help the losing team score in order to, and I quote, encourage the losing team to keep fighting. I was alerted to this by the number of games that end with a really close score and the strange number of matches where the losing team won in the last few minutes of the match. I mean, what's the point of having a fucking score if it's not the fucking score? If the fucking score doesn't even represent the true score, why even write it in numbers in fuck's name? 
Why not just represent it in different shades of pastel colour or something? This mechanic reminds me of one of those weird fucking progressive snowflake private schools where all the kids get given A grades for everything they do to encourage positivity and the teachers aren't allowed to criticise any of the students even if little Billy punches a girl or someone starts wanking in class. They still get an A grade for their work and told that they are little angels. Fucking idiots. I prefer what they did in schools in Victorian times. The teacher would just hit you with a fucking ruler. And if you misbehaved, you just got hit harder. Oh yeah, and don't even get me started on the random things that the player avatars say automatically in game. That vehicle is truly foobar in a fake Cockney accent. Look, it's the wrong accent, it's the wrong words, why the fuck would someone from London be using a term like FUBAR which is from the American military? Why the fuck would you hire a voice artist that isn't a Cockney who can't do a Cockney accent to do the voice work for a Cockney fucking soldier? Seriously, are you telling me there's a shortage of fucking Cockneys? I mean, there's fucking millions of them outside my house and most of them would do pretty much anything for the price you pay a professional voice artist. Fuck, for that money they'd come round, do your recordings and clean the studio and fix your leaky sink. When it comes to realism in video games there's always a balancing act going on. I like realism but if you strive for 100% realism you end up something like this parody game from The Onion. The beta testers I spoke with were impressed with the game's realism. You have to drive the supply truck from this village to some other village and then once you get there they say the order was messed up so you drive all the way back. Personally though I think Battlefield 5 has lost its shit with the balance between realism and creative license. I don't think I'm being racist for saying it's fucking ridiculous for having black Nazis and female Asian British infantry commando snipers. This is just common sense. It's not like I'm demanding absolute reality. It's not like I'm demanding a World War II concentration camp minigame where you score points for the amounts of prisoners you can hurl in a gas chamber before it's liberated by the American Airborne Division. I'm just asking for a bit of a reality check. And let's be candid here. EA and DICE at least half agree with me because they removed the ethnic variants from the Axis character customization options. I'm not saying that it's bad to show a little bit of creative license when it comes to allowing players to have non white male characters, especially in a war where ethnic diversity was the norm not the exception. And females played a heavy role in resistance fighting behind enemy lines and a dominant role in non combat but very dangerous support positions. And sure, by the end of the war there were some fairly bizarro Waffen SS units comprised of Romanian, Cossack and even French volunteers. But what the fuck were they thinking by rewriting history so that the raid on Telemark was soloed by some teenage chick wearing lip gloss and having black female Nazis? Were they off their fucking meds? In the final analysis the single biggest piece of evidence that Battlefield 5 is a shoddy, unprofessional, disrespectful, badly executed hot mess is this. In order to force players to stay close to each other they massively nerfed the ammo people can carry but the game launched with the ammo crate deployment fucking broken. This is not something they missed in testing, it's a core mechanic. They nerfed ammo and launch the game with the ammo resupply mechanic broken. Frankly, there's no other way to describe that other than fucking pathetic. I'm not saying that I had zero fun in Battlefield 5. For the first time ever I had fun with the planes and tanks and the vehicle pre-selection ability was cracking, shooting people in the back with a shotgun never got old, Team Deathmatch wasn't too bad, although some of the maps were basically fucking terrible. Like someone took a pastry cutter and just chopped a random hole out of a bigger map and said, fuck it, that'll do lads. There's a little bit of fun to be had, 
but make no mistake, the entire game feels like it's controlled by a schoolmistress who is trying to force you at every turn to YOLO into fights and kill, kill, fucking kill. All the big boy money is in infantry kills. And anything else you do in this game rewards you with pennies. Kills at close range or get the fuck out. The sad truth is that Battlefield is converging on Call of Duty. This will fail for two reasons. Call of Duty does it better. And also, Battlefield is Battlefield. People buy Battlefield because they want a tactical large map war game, not a twitch reflex shooter. And yeah, the whole self-heal mechanic and making the classes less distinct with more overlap is a big fat fail. If dice are hell bent on normalising all the classes so they overlap and converge and mostly can do all the same jobs and mostly use all the same weapons, this begs the question, why have different classes at all? Keep them distinct or get rid of them. Don't keep classes and try and make them all the same. Battlefield 5 represents an end of an era for the franchise and maybe, perhaps, possibly the beginning of a new era. I reckon people that like high skill gap, non-tactical shooters will like the changes. People who like Battlefield, Team Deathmatch, Call of Duty, CSGO will like this game more than the previous games in the series. But if you actually like Battlefield for being Battlefield, then it's going to feel like losing an old friend. It's now a game where classes are normalised. It's all about getting points from killing. And they might as well not bother with the full map hotkey because it doesn't matter anymore. Run to the closest cat point and try and outgun anyone you meet on the way until some random player shoots you in the back because it's basically a big fucking clusterfuck now. Some people say it's not fair to say that Battlefield 5 is trying to be Call of Duty. But as someone who has played since Battlefield 2, it sure as shit looks like that. And it feels like losing an old friend. The biggest takeaway from all of this fucking ranting, however, is this. We are experiencing a very sinister, manipulative phase in the gaming industry. Let's be brutally honest here. Publishers control gaming subreddits, whether it be GIFs, favours, meetings abroad paid for by the publisher, <coughs> holidays, or in the case of a few busted subreddits that got banned, flat out cash payments. Publishers are controlling what you read on Reddit. Publishers control the official forums. Publishers control the Steam forums. Publishers control a large proportion of the gaming media. They even bankroll most of the awards. Publishers control a huge amount of YouTube output via their community management and partnership programs. Yeah, most of your favourite YouTubers aren't even allowed to say certain things. Not satisfied with that, now a publisher wants to control what we say in chat during the game. The compulsory chat filter is about controlling what people say in chat so it's only positive about the game. Why on earth ban the phrase DLC and not the phrase free DLC? And as the final nail in the coffin in Battlefield 5, you can't even trust the fucking score on your screen because they use an algorithm to manipulate it so that every game is a close call or a last second comeback. This is a fucking sinister time because publishers have finally reached a point where they are trying to manipulate every single aspect of the player experience, both in-game and out. Right down to in-game chat and the fucking score of each match. We can no longer trust a single fucking thing that we see, read or hear. Because they're trying to manipulate and control everything so that they can manipulate and control our spending habits. I mean, look at the Metacritic score. The players think this game is shit. Everyone in the mainstream media is telling us it's fucking great. It's time for gamers to be very vocal about the fact that our trust has been abused and to make it known that we are smarter than they realise. How you decide to do that is up to you.
But for now, good luck and happy hunting.